Hey everybody, it's me. Just checking in real quick because I want to post some pictures on this vlog. I forgot to talk about how Connie used to send a Christmas card out to the Rockers and Roadies every year. She had addresses and stuff to send these to. Um, so I'm going to put some pic a couple pictures at the end of the vlog of her at home taking these pictures of her yearly Christmas cards because that's who she was to rock and roll. She was family. And I forgot to say that, so I want to put this little snippet on the end. All right. Thanks, guys. Well, hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Backstage Bimbo TV. It's me again, Allison Rouse, your most notorious groupie and author of We've Got Tonight, The Life and Times of Notorious Groupie, with the paperback edition today. Old cover that I absolutely love. My friend Mark designed it. And where you can find all my books, all my merchandise, all that's down on the link in the description. Along with today's cocktail and everything else, and I'm going to put a link to another one of my videos because today we are going to have a rocky talkie on another groupie because you guys love this series, so I'm going to keep it going as long as I can. So we are going to talk about the most famous thing and person to ever come out of Arkansas next to Bill Clinton, and apparently she was next to Bill Clinton. Yes, that's right, folks. We are talking about sweet, sweet Connie Hamsey. God rest her beautiful little soul. She was pretty awesome, and I actually met her and knew her for a while in the 80s, so let's get talking about her, okay? And we are going to have a shot called the blowjob. We've done it here before, but we all know but Connie loved her blowjobs. All right, folks. So let's, woo, I'm losing stuff over here. So I got to put the top back onto the whipped cream. Don't want it to settle. All right. So everybody grab your blowjobs, kick up your feet. Let's have a rocky talkie, shall we? And everybody knows that the blowjob is done with no hands. I'll be right back. A blowjob like Steve Jones like it, likes it. Messy. All right, guys. So let's get talking about Connie. And like I said, I will put a link down in the description to the video that I did last year um, in June where I talk about meeting John and Twistle for the first time. Because that's not only the first time I, I met John, that was the first time I met Connie as well. That's right. Oh, my hair is being pulled by my armpit. Sorry. So, Connie had been out on the Who tour. They went through Little Rock. She hooked up with the tour and just sort of jumped on a bus and wasn't going home. And she was also cruising with the truck drivers that haul the equipment and stuff and just hanging out. So, they had flown. Danny and our, you know, asked Danny and didn't fly. We flew home. But, again, you'll hear that story if you click on the link of how I first met Connie. At, with the who so anyway that's when we first met her and my first impression of her was wow she's tiny she's a lot smaller than she looked and she was just really super sweet like she was so welcoming to everyone not just with her mouth or her legs because you know that's how she had the whole show and that's natural fact and she was never ashamed of that she was never ashamed of who she was or how she approached rock and roll now she first um according to what i know met the who at woodstock and that was her first kind of groupie experience went down to little rock or maybe not but i know she's told a different story but i've been told that when she did the 25th anniversary tour with The Who is also her 25th anniversary of being a groupie for 25 years. So she's the one groupie besides me that lasted as long as she did. And there are reasons why. Because we've all seen the show that Pamela DeBars, that Miss Scammy DeBars, Mrs. Roper, whatever you want to call that. Facade. Anyway, so we've all seen her on that show and you look at Pamela kind of being very high and mighty towards her and the look on Connie's face the whole time because I did watch that show I was laughing my ass off because she's just looking at Pam like <laughs> who the fuck do you think you are because let me tell you who Connie was there's not one guy and I know a lot of guys tons of guys 
most of rock and roll has, if not all of rock and roll, has a Connie story. And every time they told a Connie story, fuck yeah, they told it with gusto. With a huge smile and a sparkle in their eye. And a gotta love Connie at the end of the story. Always how it was. She was really actually adored, loved, and respected by all the guys in rock and roll. She had great friendships and she maintained them. All of them for 30 years met new bands, new roadies, new groupies, went all over the place. I don't think she traveled the world, but she did go around America quite a bit. I don't know if she went overseas or not. I hope she did because she led a great adventurous life. But like I said, she really was adored and loved by rock and roll. And there were so many reasons for that. Because like I said, she was just so genuine. She didn't bullshit around. She didn't talk shit about anybody. And she was the real queen. Not scammy to bars, but Connie. According to the boys. Not to some made up bullshit by the press or some marketing execs or PR exec or whatever. According to the boys, she was a queen. And she really was, because like I said, she was one of the nicest people. And she was always very sweet, very welcoming, always dressed to the nines, down to her knickers and her bra. I remember being on the Who tour and seeing her, you know, walking into someone's room to go find her or something. Somebody had asked me to go find her, so I walked into the room she was in, and she was in the bathroom in this lavender lace bra bottoms from Victoria's Secret and gorgeous body. I mean, all natural gorgeous. And she was 40 when I met her. She was banging. I'm going to tell you, she had a banging body. And I'm going to put a couple pictures at the end of the video where you can see that. She was just a tiny little thing. And she had a confidence in herself that is very rare to find. And you find it in the best groupies. A certain quiet confidence that's not trying to one-up anybody like Scammy to Bars does or, you know, her dolls groupies or whatever. They're not, she wasn't trying to one-up anybody. She just loved her life and lived it. And did what she thought was really amazing for the tours. And it was. Because let me tell you, so many guys are stressed out on the road, especially roadies when you're trying to put up trusses and you have shit going on in the day or some asshole that's too hungover to work or doing coke in the 80s or whatever. Connie relieved a lot of stress and anxiety on tours. And everybody, the biggest rock stars to the no-name rock stars, everybody knew her and had a Connie story. She actually had a song written about her unlike other groupies that are supposed to be the queens of rock and roll. No, sweetie. Connie was the queen. 100%. Absolutely. And not because... And it's because boys, boys thought she was a queen. And they respected her. And like I said, she was just so kind. And she was a great human being. She was a substitute teacher for kids. So she had that kind of patience and soft spot within her that never her I never saw that woman's feathers ruffled at all she even tried to come to Salt Lake City because my mom was in education and one of the top in the state and she's like oh I'd love to come to Salt Lake and hang out for a while you know talk to your mom about getting me a substitute teacher position we did not because I was enough for my mom to handle she didn't need it to be vouching for it at the school systems. <laughs> but and then Connie never came up to Salt Lake City either, you know. But really, honestly, she was not my kind of groupie. It's not the way I chose to approach rock and roll. But Connie did because of her soul. Like, she was a beautiful old soul. There was just something when you saw her in person that was so inviting and intriguing and attractive. Like, people look at her face and it's just, she wasn't really pretty. But when you saw her put together and her hair done, no, she wasn't a Vogue style. You know, she didn't follow Vogue or anything like that. She always marched to her own drum. And she never had friends. She went up to every concert by herself and enjoyed every second of it. And was that confident and that kind and that welcoming and that funny. And she just had 
the quickest wit. If somebody was, oh, excuse me, ooh, blowjobs sometimes make me burp, apparently. Hmm. But I forgot what I was saying besides she was really awesome. Like I said, she just had this welcoming and attractive aura about her that made her just so beautiful inside and out. She really did shine. And she knew every fucking buddy, Ringo Starr, Paul McCartney, the guys in Zeppelin, because you know she got to the guys in Zeppelin. I know she got to at least two. Not saying which ones, but there were all four were alive at the time, so. But, and thing is, those guys always kept going back to Little Rock. And when they went back to Little Rock, the first person they wanted to see and they hoped would show up and that made their smiles throughout the day was Connie. Like I said, she's the true queen. She was just amazing, and God love her soul, and, you know, even she mellowed out in the later years because you don't have to, as we grow up, we don't have to be around every goddamn band we see, but she was called, and she had more passes, more stories, more relationships, more respect, and more love than any groupie I have ever known. She was an icon. Absolutely. She wasn't just part of rock and roll history because of the Sweet Sweet Connie, We're an American Band song, which, listen to that song, you guys. This was all during, you know, Scammy to Bars' years, and she says she was amused, but that song's all about the best groupies in the United States, and not one of those motherfucking groupies is from L.A., and it's not Pamela to Bars, but the first one talked about is Sweet Sweet Connie, and they called her sweet because she was. And apparently she gave a blowjob that may, would make Linda Lovelace blush. And never gave anybody any problems. And that's why she was so always welcome backstage. Because truly and honestly, she just lived her adventure with no apologies, with no boundaries, with love and pureness in her heart and soul and knew, knowing that actually what she was doing by having the whole show actually did make a difference. And not one of those rockers, roadies, ever looked down on her. Like I said, every roadie I ever knew, every rocker I ever knew that I've heard a story about her or said, Connie, big smile, twinkle in the eye, every single time. And like I said, she was actually a hottie. She had a nice body Always make sure she was dressed to the nine. She had her furs. She had her perfect underwear, her garters, beautiful dresses that looked amazing on her. And she just shone completely from within, which enhanced the outside. You know, and she had the biggest smile. And she was just really, really nice and always easy to talk to. So, you know, she was doing a lot more to relieve the guys and to relax the guys and to make them feel love and saved on the road than just doing blowjobs because that's all she's known for. No, she was a great shoulder to cry on. She was a good listener and she never told anybody secrets because she was like me. I don't have a lot of friends outside of rock and roll and I don't hang out with a lot of people. I don't gossip. I, I'm a hermit. So, and she was kind of the same way. So the rockers knew whatever secret they told her wouldn't end up in a book or wouldn't end up you know, being used to elaborate her existence. She just was. It's like the Talking Head song. The world was moving. She was right there with it. And she was. She made rock and roll a better world wherever she was. Mostly Little Rock, but she traveled around with the boys more than uh, I think she and I probably traveled around about the same. I probably went a few more places overseas than she did. But if you ask me, hands down, the queen of the groupies, the most notorious, the most loved, the most respected, the most talked about, and the groupie with the most rock and roll groupies, sweet fucking Connie. So everybody... Seriously, cheers her, rest in peace. That woman was amazing, awesome, and nobody could top her. 
Nobody could top her existence. Nobody could top her stories. Nobody could top her heart and soul. By far. Because don't let, don't let the media and all these rehashed, you know, oh, I'm going to go look for the top 50 groupies that actually made rock and roll history. I actually made rock and roll history and not on that list. The way people find these lists is by just Googling the same story that's been circulating for 20 years. That's all it is. Same story for 20 years. And Pamela DeBars tries to control everything that goes in. Like I said, when she did the special that Connie was a part of that was on VH1, Pamela was so condescending, so just degrading to Connie because she feels so above her. No, 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 sweetie. Because I'll tell you right now, Scammy DeBars and I have plenty of mutual friends. Cy Langston told me who was with The Who since inception was John's best friend since they were kids. Their early producer toured with them through every fucking tour, knew Pamela, lived in LA in the same apartment for 40 fucking years. Trust me, I've heard the stories. Don't let the bullshit that the media tells you about, you know, those 70 golden, that wasn't golden. The golden groupie really was Connie Hamsey. Yep. And I think we can all agree on that. A lot of people that do listen and comment and stuff, we have the same thoughts on things because we see things clearly and we approach things very differently because all of us were groupies before I'm with the band came out and almost famous and all that crap. And we defy all the Hollywood bullshit. And there was nothing fake, nothing Hollywood, nothing bullshit about Connie. So everybody, all hail to the queen. Sweet, sweet Connie. There you goes. There you guys go. There is the truth about Connie, one of the nicest motherfucking people you will ever meet. Never would have a bad word to say about anybody, but wouldn't take shit. Like I said, she was looking at Pamela on that thingy and just... Because <laughs> she also knew the truth about Pamela. She didn't like her either, but she wanted to be heard and to be included. And let me tell you, she was included by the people who fucking mattered. She was adored, and she was put on a pedestal by the rock stars and the roadies. The ones all who told me that Pamela was just meh. All right, guys. So there you guys go. There's my weekly Rocky Talkie about Miss Connie Hamsey. Sweet, sweet Connie, the love of rock and roll's life and the true queen. All right, guys. Like I said, there's going to be some pictures of her in cute outfits and stuff like that. I'll put my uh, phone book that you guys have seen on my Instagram account with her phone number and stuff when she was going to come to Salt Lake City. And she actually wanted Danny and I to come down to Little Rock and she's like, you'll be my protégés. Sweetie, we don't need to be protégés. We are already certified. But thank you. Because like I said, she was really sweet and I knew this was a person that would never judge anybody and never have anything bad to say. So, all right, hit the subscribe, you guys, hit the bells, hit, oh, my bells, hit subscribe and the share, spread me like I spread my legs in the 80s. All right, guys, thank you for everybody that's tuning in and really watching and actually truly 100% supporting my channel. You guys rock. I'll see you on Sunday for some cocktails and rock tales. Cheers, big ears.